Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy the 20th chapter. Here in Israel united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Romans chapter 11, and we're going to pick up at verse 13 again. Romans chapter 11 and verse 13. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. The Jews that lived in Rome. Read. I magnify mine office, uh -huh. if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh. Them which are my flesh. Why would I pr provoke them to emulation, to jealousy? Who's, who is Paul specifically talking about when he says, are my flesh? Jump back over to verse 1. Verse 1. I say then, have God cast away his people? Uh -huh. God forbid. Here's his flesh. Read. For I also am an Israelite uh -huh. of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Paul was of the tribe of Benjamin, the southern kingdom, the Jews, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. So he's saying that in back in verse 14, I might provoke them to emulation because they didn't want the Gentiles, the northern kingdom, to come back to repentance. Why? Because they was carried away to those dumb idols like we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now let's jump back over and let's read verse 15. Verse 15. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world. Okay, there you go. See, it says world, and that means everybody. Let's show you. It ain't talking about them. Let's go to Philippians. We're going to stay in the New Testament. Let's go to Philippians chapter 3, and let's read verse 21, who he's talking about the reconciling of the world. Read that. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 21. Uh -huh. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, uh -huh. according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things uh -huh. unto himself. Read. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for. Is that what I want? Let me see here. Let's see. Philippians chapter 3. Bear with me one moment here. It might be 220. Uh, 3. Oh, did I write that down? Well, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Bear with me here. I'm looking at it, and, uh, oh, no, no, it ain't 321. It is Ephesians 321. There we go. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 21. Let's read that one. The book of Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 21. Uh-huh. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. He said the Philippians are who? World without end. Give me Isaiah 45, 17. Because back in Romans 11, he said, if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, all 12 tribes, who is that? The world without end. Read it. Let's see who it is. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45 and verse 17. Yep. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Uh -huh. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end. End. So those those Ephesians that Paul is calling a world without end are who? Israelites. Let's go back to Romans. Let's go back to it. Romans chapter 11, and let's read verse 15 again. Romans chapter 11 and verse 15. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, uh -huh. what, shall be, what shall the receiving of them be? But life from the dead. That's how it is. It's like coming back to life when you get the, the repentance uh, or the spirit of God comes into you. It's like coming back from the dead. Read. For if the first fruit be holy, 
the lump is also holy. Uh -huh. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Now let's talk about those branches. Read. And if some of the branches be broken off, uh -huh. and thou being a wild olive tree. Meaning that you didn't grow up like the, the uh, natural branches. You didn't grow up like the regular branches did. You're a wild olive tree, but what? Were grafted in. You were brought back in. Read. Among them. And with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Let's go to that Jeremiah chapter 11. Let's see who those branches are that was broken off so we can get some understanding. Because the letters of Paul are hard to be understood. If you don't keep the commandments, if you don't apply the commandments, if you don't study to show yourself approved, if you don't learn from someone that is more learned than you, you will never understand the letters of Paul. Read that. Jeremiah 11. Let's read 16, 17. Jeremiah chapter 11 and verse 16. Uh -huh. The Lord called thy name a green olive tree, uh -huh. fair and of goodly fruit. Read. With the noise of a great tumult, he hath kindled fire upon it, and the branches of it are broken. The branches are broken. Read. For the Lord of hosts that planted thee hath pronounced evil against thee. Uh -huh. For the evil of the house of Israel. The house of Israel are the branches. Read. And of the house of Judah. And the house of Judah, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Is that in on that? Verse 17. Which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger and offering incense unto Baal. To worshiping idols. So God cast them away. Going back to Romans chapter 11, verse 17. Now we know those branches are the house of Israel, the house of Judah. Read. Romans chapter 11, verse 17. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree. You didn't grow up under the law of Moses. Read. Were grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Let's get another precept on that, Ezekiel chapter 37. And I think we want to start at like verse 31. We're talking about those grafting in of trees, right? Let's read uh, Ezekiel 37, and we're going to start at verse 15. Let's read that. Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 15. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick. Take thee a branch, read. And write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. That's Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, read. Then take another stick and write upon it. For Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. That is the ten tribes, the northern kingdom, read. And join them one to another into one stick. Do what? Join them one to another into one stick. That's called grafting in. If you ever watched uh, Mr. Miyagi and uh, Daniel's son <laughs> on the Karate Kid, what was his what was his profession? He grafted tree branches together. That's what it's talking about, bringing Israel and Judah, the northern kingdom, the southern kingdom, the blacks and Hispanics and native Indians back together again through Christ. Let's read on in that. Verse 17. And they shall become one in thine hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou not show us what thou meanest by these? That's why we got the 12 tribes chart. For those that say the 12 tribe chart is false. You're crazy. It's biblical. Jump down to verse, um, let's see. Let's jump down to verse 21. Verse 21. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, uh -huh. whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. Here's the point. Verse 22. And I will make them one nation. One tree. One stick. Read. In the land upon the mountains of Israel. Uh -huh. And one king shall be king to them all. Read. And they shall be no more two nations. They shall no more be divided. Read. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Let's go back to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, and let's read 17 again. Romans chapter 11 and verse 17. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree wert grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the holy tree, of uh, the olive tree, uh -huh. boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root. But the root thee. So what he's saying is humble yourself. Don't think too highly of yourself because you was offered the chance of repentance through the death and resurrection of Christ. Humble yourself because through your sin, there was no sacrifice. If it was not for Christ coming back, you would not be partakers of the tree, the natural branches. You would forever have been cut off. Let's jump down to verse 24. 
Verse 24. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, uh -huh. and wert graft contrary to nature into a good olive tree. Like I said, because there was no sacrifice for idolatry. Read. How much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be graft into their own olive tree? Uh -huh. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel uh -huh. until the fullness of the Gentiles become Let's in. Let's see who was blind. Go to Matthew chapter 23. Blindness in part. What is he talking about? Who was blind? While Christ walked the earth. Let's go to Matthew 23 and let's read verse 15. And we're going to jump. Matthew chapter 23, verse 15. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Scribes and Pharisees. Jump down to verse 16. Verse 16. Woe unto you, ye blind guys. Ye blind guys. Jump to 17. 17. Ye fools and blind. Verse 19. Verse 19. Ye fools and blind. Verse 24. Verse 24. Ye blind guys. Verse 26. Verse 26. Thou blind Pharisee. Now we're going back to Romans. Romans chapter 11, verse 25. Romans chapter 11, verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, uh -huh. that blindness in part has happened to Israel. A blindness had happened to the Pharisees and those that followed them because they couldn't see Christ as the Messiah or the, the northern kingdom coming back to God. Read. Until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. Uh -huh. And so all Israel shall be saved. All Israel that repents shall be saved. All Israel that comes to Christ shall be saved. Read. As it is written, there shall come out of Sion the deliverer. And shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Uh -huh. For this is my covenant unto them. This is my covenant unto them. Read. When I shall take away their sins. Go to Hebrews chapter 8. He's going to take away their sins, the house of Israel. Not all nations. He's not taking away the sins of the white man. He's not taking away the sins of the East Indians, the Arabs, whoever the hell else, the Chinese, the Japanese. He's not taking away their sins. There is no grafting in for those nations. Only for the house of Israel. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 8 and let's read verse 12. The book of Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 12. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. That's singular. Read. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Now let's jump down to verse 8 to see who it's talking about. Verse 8. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel uh -huh. and with the house of Judah. Going back to Romans now. Romans chapter 11, and let's see, where do we leave off? Let's read verse 27 again. Romans chapter 11 and verse 27. Uh -huh. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. Of the house of Israel, all 12 tribes. Read on. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. They are enemies for your sakes. Read. But as touching the election. As touching the election. The gospel is about Christ, right? It says for the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes that you can now receive the uh, understanding of Jesus the Christ and repent. But as, as, as concerning the election, about who they are. Read. They are beloved for the Father's sake. But they are beloved for the Father's sake. That means that they is, go to Proverbs. Let's show you. Let's show you what that means. What does that mean? They are beloved for the Father's sakes. Proverbs chapter 24. And let's read 16. This is what it means. They are beloved for the Father's sakes because they are the elected of God. Read that. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times. So God is saying that uh, a just man will fall seven times, meaning he'll fall, but what did he do? Read on. And riseth up again. He'll rise up again. What did we read back in uh, um, uh, Romans? What did we be uh, back in Romans? Let's go back to it. Let's go back to Romans, and we're going to precept again. Romans chapter 11, and we're going to read verse 11. Romans chapter 11 and verse 11. Uh -huh. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? That they should never be able to do what? Rise up again? Read. God forbid. God forbid because of this reason. Luke chapter 2 verse 34. 
Luke chapter 2 and verse 34. Read it when you get it. The book of Luke chapter 2 and verse 34. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child Jesus is, the Christ is set for the fall oh, uh -huh. and rising again of many in Israel. In where? In Israel. Uh -huh. And for a sign which shall be spoken against. So the fall and rise, the grafting in of Romans 11 is talking about the Israelites through Jesus Christ. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, Nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana. Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.